What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk about whether or not we should be selling our gold to buy more silver. We're going to be answering a subscriber's question related to that, along with a list of other questions. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos, subscribe to my second channel for weekly videos, get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club for giveaways, live streams, deal alerts, and a whole lot more. And of course, make sure to go and get your six free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. Refer a friend by the end of the month, and they're going to give you 10 free random stocks. Refer three friends by the end of the month, and they're going to give you all the way up to 50 15 free shares of Apple. Everything will be linked in the description. So today is Sunday. Can't even tell you what the date is. I'm filming the video, I think like eight or nine, maybe even 10 days in advance. But being that it's Sunday, it's time for the Sunday Q&A. I have a list of questions right here and we're gonna run through them. But I wanna start the Q&A off with a question for you to answer. What do you think of these unedited videos where I don't have the DYDSS branding at the beginning of the video or image overlays or pictures of the DYDSS merchandise or pictures of anything, just raw footage, film, and toss it up onto YouTube with absolutely no editing. The reason I'm trying this out is because I'm filming way more videos in a much shorter period of time and it just, it makes life so much easier not having to edit the simple videos. If I'm gonna do financial news throughout the week, yeah, I'll edit those videos, but a simple Q&A, I don't think it needs editing. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Moving away from that, let's now jump into some of these questions. I have a list right here on my phone. We're gonna check these out. And of course, if you have any questions for me and you wanna be featured in the next Q&A video, you're more than welcome to head on down to the comments and ask away anything and everything related to silver, gold, prepping, finance. Ask away. So the first question we have here is coming from Campero. And the question is, what is your favorite high premium silver? Good question. Thanks for asking. My favorite high premium silver. You know, to be honest with you, Ever since the beginning, I've really never been into high premium silver. It's just not really my thing for whatever reason. Although, <laughs> with the way premiums have gotten out of control on American Silver Eagles, my favorite pure silver one troy ounce coin, I guess that's technically now high premium silver, so I want to say that. But to spice things up and make things more interesting, I think I'm going to go with maybe poured silver. I've always been fascinated by poured silver. Number one, because it's obviously it's made out of silver, but two, just the, the art that goes into it. Because it's not always just a simple poured silver bar. I've seen poured silver stars, poured silver cubes. It's actually really interesting. Poured silver is actually really cool. And unfortunately, poured silver definitely comes with a higher premium than what we're used to, especially if you're stacking generic silver or constitutional silver or something like that. Much higher premium, because like I said before, there's a lot of craftsmanship or, or, or art, time, that goes into pouring these silver bars or stars or cubes or whatever it is. I've always been fascinated by it, and it always kind of reminded me of something you'd find in a treasure chest or on a pirate ship or something like that. It just looks so old school. And by the way, there are poured silver skulls. There are so many different ways, like like the limitless. The possibilities are endless. Whatever you can think of. You, you can pour a, a silver tree <laughs> if that's what you want to. If you have the ability to do so, it's possible. And obviously, poured silver carries a much higher premium than what we're used to. So I think that's gonna be the answer to the question. Next question we have here is coming from Caius. And the question is, what's your take on physical silver holdings, in quotes, stocks, silver stocks? What do I think of silver stocks? For me personally, not for me, not interested. Have nothing in silver stocks. I have nothing in 
paper silver. I don't even have anything in silver mining companies or gold mining companies. Although I have received two shares of different mining companies. One is I think Cleveland Cliffs and the other one would be, man, I'm drawing a blank right now. I didn't buy either of them. They were given to me for free and I'm not really interested in buying any more. But when it comes to silver stocks or, or silver on paper or anything like that, it's just not really my thing. I don't understand why I need to have a quote unquote physical silver holdings stock when I have my own physical silver holdings locked away in DYDSS headquarters. See, if you're gonna be going after precious metals, I think it makes far more sense to hold on to physical precious metals in your possession. That's just my opinion. I see no need for investing in uh, paper metals. You can. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with it. I'm not one of those people who, you know, you know, I'm not one of those people who keep, you know, repeating everybody else being like, oh, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. That's not what I'm talking about here. I just don't see a need. It doesn't make sense to me. And one thing that I've noticed over the years is that, yeah, of course, some people invest in paper silver or paper gold or mining companies because they see the fundamental value there. It makes sense to them in their head. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm not saying it's a good idea either. It's just not for me. A lot of people out there, it makes perfect sense to them, so that's what they do. Good for them. Here's the issue. Of course, that's what some people do, but there's another group of people who will make these types of investments because they want to <laughs> they want to I guess you can say diversify but they're also unwilling to step far enough away from the precious metals so then they just you know get involved in the stock market but in a precious metal type of way that's just something that I've noticed over the years there are people that are stacking silver and gold and then if I have a conversation with them and they're like, oh yeah, I'm in the stock market too. I'm like, oh really, what do you invest in? Broad market index funds, the blue chips, growth stocks, what do you win? And they're like, oh, just, just you know, silver and gold on paper. And that's, that's it. So there are a lot of people out there who I guess are not, or are having a hard time stepping out of their comfort zone. They'll step away from precious metals and then they'll step into something that's also, you know, precious metals. So to me, it's just not really my thing. To me, that's not my way of going about investing. Silver and gold for me, it's all about wealth preservation. The stock market is all about wealth building. So as I always say, friendly reminder, if anybody's interested in opening up an investment account, you could always do so on Webull. That's the one that I use. And if you download the app and fund your account, they're gonna give you six free random stocks just for doing so. If you refer one friend to the app by the end of the month, they're gonna give you 10 free random stocks for the referral. It's part of their advertising budget. And if you refer three friends to the app by the end of the month, they're gonna give you all the way up to 15 free shares of Apple. We will link in the description. Don't pass up on an opportunity. Next question we have here is coming from, let me check, coming from William. And the question is, can the rounds and bars be random or should we buy known names? Good question. Thanks for asking. Personally, I don't believe it matters. If you want to go after known names, obviously they're a little bit more recognizable or they could potentially be a little bit more recognizable. If push came to shove and you had to part ways with some of your silver, somebody out there might not recognize the silver round that you have with a picture of uh, I don't know, George Carlin on it or something like that. They might be a little bit more familiar with or inclined to buy a silver buffalo or a sunshine round, something like that, or an A-mark round, things of that nature. So when it comes to generic silver rounds, personally, I don't think it matters. I think random is a good way to go. And by going with random designs, whether it's at the local coin shop or you're ordering them online, Usually the random ones are a little bit cheaper. Although, if you go for 
two of my favorite silver rounds. They're pretty much just as cheap as random ones. The silver buffalo and the silver sunshine rounds slash bars. Or even better, you can get silver buffalo rounds minted by sunshine. Best of both worlds right there. They have a security feature, low, well, I don't want to say low premiums, but lower premiums than a lot of other silver out there. Super recognizable, super in demand. There's a lot of them. It's not like there's a shortage of silver buffaloes out there. And everybody knows what they are. So I would definitely say those are a good option. Next question we have here is coming from Mikey DYDSS2. And the question is, have y'all subbed to the backup channel yet? Good question, thanks for asking. For those of you who didn't know, I have two YouTube channels. I have this one right here that you're watching, which is where I post longer form videos every single day. But I also have a second channel where I post shorter form videos once a week. And I've had that channel, I've actually had that channel longer than I've had this channel for, but the idea of having a backup channel is just simply to just have a backup channel. The same reason, if you're into prepping, you understand what I'm talking about. God forbid if something were to happen to this channel, I could pick up where I left off over there. So if I lose access to this channel for any reason, you really should be connected with me on my secondary channel so we can continue to be connected. God forbid something were to happen to this channel. So please go subscribe. And also, not for nothing, I have received eh, a handful of comments from people, or should I say a handful of comments from whiny complainers who say things like, oh, your videos are too long. This 26 minute long video could have been 24 and a half minutes if you didn't say blah, 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 blah. Or <laughs> people say, oh, you post too many videos. Well, hey, if that's the case, if my videos are too long, go to the second channel. If the videos are too frequently uploaded, go to the second channel. No reason to complain, no reason to whine. I have two channels that cover all bases. Link in the description. Please subscribe. Next question we have is actually the last question of the night, and it's coming from Andrew. And the question is, would it be a good idea to trade gold for silver when gold is on a high and silver on a low? Good question. Thanks for asking. I'm gonna start this off by saying, I don't believe that's a bad idea. I believe that could actually work out very, very well if you are strategic and are willing to move back and forth between the metals like that. I personally, could not see myself doing that. I've been stacking both metals for almost five years at this point, four and a half years. I've never traded, actually I've never traded any metal for any other metal, but the idea for me is to eventually, when the gold to silver ratio gap closes in, trade some silver for gold. And I just wanna move in that straightforward direction. I know you can end up with a whole lot more silver by trading gold for it or selling your gold to buy silver when the ratio is far apart, you could absolutely really come out on top over that. It's just a little bit too back and forth or a little bit too wishy-washy for me. That, that, that's too much as far as I'm concerned, just for me. I don't, I'm, I'm unwilling to do that, but I do believe it can work out very, very well for a lot of people. So a lot of people out there, like myself included, my goal, my plan is to eventually get myself to the point where I can trade some, not all, not most, not half, just some of my silver for gold. When of course the gold to silver ratio gap closes in. But during times, like potentially right now, I think the gold to silver ratio is like 90 to one or something like that. It's pretty far apart. And I remember about maybe two years ago or so, we were looking at about 100 to one. During times like those, I don't think it would be a half bad idea at all for someone that's willing to make that conversion. Just for me personally, I'm all about taking steps forward and I just wanna continue on the trajectory that I'm on. I don't wanna take a step backward just for a shot at being able to take multiple steps forward after that step back. It's just all personal preference, but I do personally believe you could actually make it out quite well by selling some 
gold to buy more silver when the ratio is far apart. I don't think it's a bad idea at all. It's just a little bit too much for me to have to worry about or deal with. So that's going to wrap it up. This Q&A, if you want to respond to any of the questions that were asked, you're more than welcome to do so. If you want to ask some questions of your own for the next Q&A, head on down to the comments and ask away. If you guys like today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Go and get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, coffee mugs, and a bunch of different designs, and a lot of the products are helping us raise some funds and awareness for different charity organizations. DYDSS store will be linked in the description. Come and join us in the Precious Metals VIP Club, which is where I do giveaways every single month, live streams multiple times a week, deal alerts on silver and gold almost every single day. You can watch all of my videos early and commercial free, and every Saturday morning, I post a brand new vlog. VIP Club link in the description. I guarantee you it's worth it. And of course, make sure to go and get your six free stocks by downloading Weeble and funding your account. Refer one friend to the app by the end of the month, and they're going to give you 10 free random stocks for the referral. It's part of their advertising budget. And if you refer three friends to the app by the end of the month, they're going to give you all the way up to 15 free shares of Apple. Weeble link in the description. Time is running out. Don't pass up on an opportunity. If you don't want the stocks, go and get them anyway. They're free. Then just sell them. Congratulations. Now you have the cash to go and get you some silver and gold if that's what you want. We will link in the description. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again, what are your thoughts on everything shared in today's video? What are your thoughts on some of the questions that I was asked? How would you go about answering them? How would you answer these questions if you were the one who was asked? And of course, if you have any questions for me, you want to be featured in the next Q&A, head on down to the comments and ask anything and everything related to silver, gold, personal finance, prepping, whatever makes sense for the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.